Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2024 Ram 3500 Mega Cab four wheel drive in the limited Longhorn trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 28560 Firestone tires wrapped around 20 inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Bright White Clear Coat, and it's just a basic white, nothing too special about it. It does look nice though. A lot of chrome here in the bumper area. So the bumper, the grill, all around the headlights, uh, just all chromed out. We have a little bit of matte black there at the bottom, down here where the parking sensors are, and the chrome tow hooks as well. Uh, but most of it is this chrome. Have the large RAM badge here with the hidden camera right there in the center. Uh, also behind this grill is active grill shutter, so it'll close off when the cooling is not needed to help with airflow. So there's parking sensors across the front. Really, really cool looking hooks up here, chrome hooks. The headlights are a projector, LED projector. You also have reflector LEDs for the fog lights. There's a 3500 badging here on the side, heavy duty. And this one has the Cummins turbo diesel engine. Definitely a plus for towing and hauling. The side mirrors are chrome. Uh, there's also a camera down here. This is part of that 360 camera system. So there's a camera in the front, the back, and here on the sides. Uh, and these mirrors also have a light. Uh, so you can have like a spotlight here, LED spotlights here in the front. Uh, there's also side lights here that illuminate. You can control them from the driver's seat. So this one is the mega cab. So it's got the huge cab back here. <laughs> so you can see this whole area, lots of room back there. Very impressive. And I'll show you uh, the different positions that the seats go in. So there's a lot of functionality there for cargo and passengers. Uh, so looking here at the profile, it does have the power steps that deploy when you open up the door, body colored handles, and then it has a matte black uh, finish right there in the center of uh, the windows there. Be kind of cool, I guess, if it was gloss black and then you tint the front glass. Uh, you can even really have it white as well since you have this area here white. It also has a RAM boxes. There's so much upgrades on this truck. Uh, I'll show you the window sticker at the end, but it's very, very impressive. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity key system. It also has the remote start. You have the ability to lower the tailgate as well, lock and unlock, of course, panic button as well. And check it out, it has this gold here on the sides. And then it says Ram Longhorn here on the back. Really nice looking key. It's not overly heavy and it's not overly big. It's contoured nicely. It feels quality. And uh, so it's relatively easy to carry around with you. So using the vehicle, you can keep this in your bag, in your pocket, as long as it's with you and also on the outside of the door. Uh, to lock the doors, you just press this button. So it locks the doors. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle here. There's a sensor back here. It senses the key on the outside of the door and unlocks the doors for you. There's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only. And there's a physical key on the inside of the key fob. Very impressive interior of this vehicle. So here on the passenger door, uh, it has this brown, light brown, and then the dark brown contrast with that gold trim here. Wood grain, open pour wood, really nice looking. This is off soft, soft touch surfaces here. There's, there's a double stitch right here in a French design. Same thing down here. Soft touches all up here, here around your arm. Uh, this is open here, so you can stand something up there if you need to. Nice little shelf. So you can put some stuff. This one kind of a little bit deeper than this part. There's a little pocket right here as well. A lot of little places to kind of set stuff down when you get in the truck. Uh, and then there's a larger pocket here at the bottom with the foam inserts to carry cups. So you can take those out and clean it if you need to. Uh, but this bottom portion is a durable plastic. And then the upper portion is the soft touch. There's a tweeter. And then there's a regular speaker here in the door. There's the RAM name there on the seal plate here in the threshold area. The jack for the spare tires under this passenger seat. And the passenger seat is powered, so you can go 
not only go forward and back, but you can also go up and down and tilt and a two-way lumbar adjustment as well. And these are leather seats, heated and cooled. But you notice that um, right in here, you can see they, they have a cloth right where that meets up with the hard plastic. So that kind of helps out. This is a more supple material. And when, it's, uh, when you're sitting on the seat, it, it makes the seat last longer basically doing that. So you have the leather here and here. Once again, we have the different, two different color browns, the contrast stitching, uh, the piping, a uh, little bit of a, like, I don't know, like alligator skin style going on here and here. And then there's perforations here in the center, more contrast stitching. These are heated and ventilated seats. And then these headrests are adjustable, so you kind of like, they kind of ratchet, so you pull them all the way forward to release them, and then they go forward. And it has a leather care guide that it comes with, that's pretty cool. Has a longhorn uh, patch here in the back. Limited longhorn. So this one has the all-weather mats here, uh, catch all the slush and mud and stuff like that you see there's quite a bit of room but you can see it kind of tapers there a little bit there's a nice pocket for putting papers or whatever right in here it's designed to fit a full-size file folder so you can set that in there if you need to and there is a locking glove compartment here smooth plastic on the inside kind of pretty good size overall uh, and then you have some more contrast stitching here that gold color here as well as here and there's a little bit of filigree here as well and it has the open pour wood limited longhorn edition kind of branded into it looking really nice and this is actually another glove compartment this is a felt lined uh, storage compartment as well but it's non-locking have more piping more stitching and then a soft dash this is kind of like a vinyl type material dash and they also have handles on all four doors and there's wrapped up and stitched nicely this one has the sunroof entering and exiting the vehicle is is great there's lots of headroom lots of room here that even has the deployable steps when you open the door they pop out for you the swing of the door is nice same thing here in the back the swing of the door is excellent uh, the opening is great. The swing of the door in the back is very important because not only can you use it for passengers, you can also use it for cargo. And I'll show you how, how, you, how to do that in a second. Uh, so the inside of the back door has, there's no skimping on the styling. We have the gold, we have the open pour wood, uh, the different colors and soft touch materials, the little compartments and everything. So they did a great job with maintaining the style here in the back. There's a threshold area still looking good. And these are heated seats back here as well. Has a center armrest, cup holders in the middle there. We can lift this up. Now we also have the Longhorn uh, patch here in the back seats as well. Looking really nice. Very comfortable anywhere you see it, sit in this vehicle, even in the center. I don't know if you notice that uh, the center position does have very similar bolsters as the end positions. Uh, so while these this position is not heated, is but it's just about as comfortable uh, as the end positions there. You see it has the, the handles there, and then the pockets on the back of the seat. The seats here have a like a buckle embellishment here, really nice with the filigree and everything. Very Western looking, and then there's the compartments here. You don't have to open this up, that's just for looks. It's, there's the compartment there. Uh, now check out the floor, lots of room here. Uh, there's also room underneath the seat for storage as well so you can you can slide a like a rifle case under there or whatever you want under those seats now you will need to move stuff out of the way when you fold the seats down i'll show you there's two different ways of doing it so that way you can maintain that pass that that cargo space if you want now there's a little little tiny storage area right here uh right there kind of put some change i guess right in there and then there is the usb ports usb c usb a and there's heated seat controls three stage heated seats Climate control vents and then a 400 watt power inverter, three prong power inverter. Then you have some cup holders that's usable for the front or the back, and you can also stick a tablet in there, it's pretty cool. 
So speakers here in the headliner, lights, hooks there in the back. Has a power sliding rear glass as well. Okay, so these seats, um, there's a couple ways. You notice that seat over there is reclined a little bit. Uh, so that's the full reclining portion. And these seats are more in the forward position. And you use this lever to accomplish the reclining. Uh, now, if you just want to fold the seats down without taking anything out of here, so you can still have stuff here, uh, you can fold them down by using the lever right here. So you just reach in, move that lever up like so, and you can fold the seat down like that and keep this, the bottom portion fixed position. So if you have stuff under the seat, this is what you can do. And then you can use this as a cargo space, you know, put a box right there or whatever. Uh, there's also space behind the seat as well. There's also compartments back there. We'll get to that in a second. There's bag holders. There's a lot of functionality. They did a good job of designing a very useful vehicle and designed for an actual person's using a truck. Okay, so the second position is, put that back up, the second position is using this right here. Now, this is where you'll have to take stuff out from underneath the seat. So you pull this and it releases the seat. And as we fold it down like this, the bottom portion is also gonna fold down. That's why you have to take whatever you have under there out. So you can see it goes all the way down. So now uh, we have a flat surface even with that back portion. Uh, so that back portion now is more usable because it's more of a flat surface to put cargo here. Uh, and you notice that we can do it on one side or the other. So we can have some extra cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. And I can fold that side or this side or both and have a wide open space here. Uh, but when you do fold it down, you can see the bottom part part goes down. So you have to take whatever you have under the seat out so it doesn't get squished. So these compartments back here, there's actually two of them. The one on the right is actually open. This one has less space because there's a, 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 sub, a um, there's some comp electrical components. I think it is the amplifier for the radio. Uh, but you can see it latches. See this latch right here? This is actually a, 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 so this latches down. So if you put tools in here and you close it, it snaps in place and it stays under there. So let's say the vehicle gets an accident or something. Uh, some vehicles just have a compartment and it just has a flap on top. Uh, well, it, if, you, if the vehicle starts rolling or something, all that th everything that's in there, like tools or whatever, is going to come out. This actually secures this latch down, uh, so that way it's you know stays in there. You can lift it up and it'll actually stay up like so. So there's a compartment here, kind of small on this side. Like I said, there's some uh, some components uh, taking up some space here. And then you have a uh, space there, and then on that far side is actually open, just wide open, uh, so where you can have more functional cargo there. Car seat anchors are here, and then the bag holders here, there. There's actually three car car seat anchors, so there's one in the center and one on each side. You can see the space there uh, behind this seat, and this seat's actually reclining, so even with the seat reclining, it has a pretty good amount of room back there. Uh, it does have these hooks here on the very back. You can see it. So when you use these hooks, it will uh, cover up the back glass. So if you like put hang clothes or whatever there, it will cover up the back glass since they're in the back. So yeah, you have the three positions um, of the seats and just very functional overall. I think it did a great job with this mega cab. All that extra space uh, does help out, especially if you're doing long trips or something. So yes, this one even has the Ram boxes. And if you're not familiar with Ram boxes, they are absolutely fantastic. They're lockable storage here on the side that's so easy to get to. It's like right here, right there on the side. Uh, there's a light in there as well. And just lots and lots of space for tools or whatever you wanna put in there. It does have a drain plug as well. You can see there's two lights, one on each side, which is great. Uh, so very useful and you know if kids were to get in here uh, there is a emergency release there uh, but yeah there's really tough material you, there's cell accessories like dividers and different things this one actually has rubber mats right here in the bottom uh, that you can take out this, usually they don't have that i don't know if this is a 2024 thing or whatever but it does have those um here and here it's kind of interesting 
but yeah, highly recommend these upgrades and unless you don't need them, you know, I mean, if you need to carry some tools with you or whatever, these are great compartments, lockable, very secure. And, uh, and they kind of get out of the way. They just basically cover this area where the wheel well would have been anyway. Uh, so it does limit a little bit of your, your bed, but uh, you can still lay a you know, sheet of plywood back there and everything. So you'll notice that it has the clearance lights here, but integrated in there is the shark fin antenna and also the GPS antenna there at the top, which is pretty cool. The back of the cab has a cargo light here, as well as a light, a, a camera, a cargo camera, which we'll see when we get on the inside. So there's one more camera. Third brake light is up there as well. And then that's the power sliding rear glass. LED tail lights, all the exterior lights are LED, turn signals, reverse lights, all that stuff, LED. The backup camera is located right here. It's in a very center, very center high position. So it's the very center of the vehicle and it's in a very high position so you can easily back up to a trailer. You have really good visibility from that location. I really like this ram badging, three-dimensional kind of popping out ram head. Has the limited longhorn badging back here. Has the heavy-duty tow hitch with the outlets here. Check it out. Got these two different outlets, and they're right above uh, the they're right above the bumper, so they're easy to get to and so they stay relatively clean uh, instead of you know crawling under here they're right above the bumper easy to get to and see and all that stuff it has the parking sensors back here it also has the uh, rear cross traffic alert and blind spot detection system as well and the indicators for that is on the side mirror and it also gives you audio audible alerts as well uh, okay so the tailgate it's basically a you press this button right here it locks with the vehicle and you can see there's a light here as well uh, but it has dampened when you when it lowers it's dampened now you notice on the key it had the ability to lower the tailgate so let's go ahead and do that so double tap it and it comes down so as you're approaching it or whatever you want to load something up if you got a free hand, you can go ahead and release it as you get up there, and then you can, you know, uh, easier access, I guess, without touching the vehicle. Now, it has cargo lights in here as well. Now, this one has the divider, and it's lockable, so, no, it's, so it's not going to be easily stolen, uh, and you can put it in different positions along those different notches there. This one has the spray and bed liner as well, which is an upgrade. And then there's a cleat right here, tie-down system right here and it goes anywhere on that rail. There's two of them on each side. So you can have different tie down locations that's appropriate for what you're tying down, very important. And then you have fixed tie downs here at the bottom, here in the back and the front. Lifting up this tailgate is very light. It feels so much lighter than what it looks. Uh, it's like, you know, just a couple fingers here and I can lift it up and secure it. Of course, we have the Ram box here on the other side. Uh, so two ram boxes really nice so the fuel door is here on the driver's side not only does it have uh, the capless design it has like a little cover shipping cap on it right now um, but there is the def fill as well so you don't have to get underneath the hood and try to fill it up uh, you can fill the def and the, the the diesel fuel right here i really like how you just open the door and then the side steps just deploy out ready to go Starting it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, just hold the brake and press this button. Now, you don't have to hold the button, but when you press it, sometimes it'll be a little bit of a delay before it starts, depending on how cold it is. So you just press that. It, if there is a delay, uh, then it'll let you know right here that it's warming up the engine uh, before you start it. And it'll basically just sit there, and then all of a sudden it'll start. So. Just keep that in mind. You just press the button one time and just wait for it. And sometimes you have to wait a few seconds and then it'll start, that kind of thing. But it'll handle it for you, basically. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. There's the accelerator brake pedal, which are power. Uh, you can adjust those in and out as a power switch to adjust those. And then there's a foot actuated parking brake here. 
So let's take a look under the hood. To raise the hood, there's a latch right here in the very center. You can actually see it, I think. You just move it to the left and lift up on the hood. It doesn't take, take much effort. Uh, and then it gets to a certain point and it'll go up the rest of the way uh, by itself. And it's, it's up there quite a ways and I'll show you how to lower it uh, in a second. Okay, so this has the diesel, 6.7 liter turbo diesel Cummins engine. Uh, which is basically a renowned hauler for towing and hauling and heavy duty uh, uses basically. And this vehicle is basically made for heavy duty. It's not the type of vehicle you wanna buy just to just drive it around. You wanna buy it because you have a purpose. You have to have a uh, something that uh, you're hauling. You notice it has two batteries. There's one on the other side. There's one right here. They're both insulated. Uh, and it has a significant amount of airflow here as well as the cooling as well uh, But it has a six-speed automatic transmission uh, Paired to it, but yeah, this is the type of vehicle that when you're driving it it has the leaf springs So typically Ram trucks have a coil springs and this one has the leaf springs and Really the ride quality is significantly better when you have a load, when you're pulling a heavy load or you have a heavy load in the back of the truck, it's just designed for that, you know? It's designed for hauling and towing. And, um, you know, basically that's, that, that, that's its main function. And you notice that this one is not a dually. You can get the dually option. Uh, this is a single, single rear wheel, uh, but the 3500 does come in a dually as well. Okay, so lowering this hood, you can just come right here on the sides, depends on how tall you are, and, and grab the hold of the side right here, push down on it, like so, and then get it down to a position in which is easier for you to manage, and then move around here to the center, and you go ahead and close it that way. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, there's two presets here uh, for the power seat. There's also the door locks, power windows, and the front two are one touch uh, up and down. It is a laminated glass as well. So it's one touch up and down here in the front. Adjusting the side mirrors, uh, you know, requires a little bit of explanation here. Uh, first of all, there's left and right and a little pad right there, which is pretty typical. Uh, you also have the ability to power fold them in by pressing that button. Uh, but default, when you adjust this, by default, is this upper mirror. If you want to lo adjust the lower mirror, this little one right here, you press that, it eliminates, and now you can use that to adjust this lower portion. If you want to extend the mirrors out, it's like away from the vehicle, you press that, that eliminates. Now you can use this little pad to extend out the side mirror. To turn on a, there's two different lights. There's a light here on the side, going towards the side of the vehicle here more in the back. You can press that, that'll turn that on. If you want a light here in the front, like a spotlight and for, in front of you, you can press this button uh, and it'll illuminate in front of the vehicle. Now, if you power fold the side mirrors with that on, then the light shines to the side of the vehicle. Uh, so that's how you, you know, utilize all the different features there on the side mirror, which is kind of interesting. And most side mirrors don't have all those functionalities. They are heated side mirrors. Both the upper and lower portion is heated and it has the, the blind spot detection system and rear cross traffic alert as well, integrated into the side mirror. All right, so enough with the side mirror. So we have the power seat here on the side, uh, on the driver's side, just like the other side, basically. Two-way lumbar adjustment. You can raise and lower like a dentist chair and very impressive heated and ventilated seats. To the left of the steering column, uh, for one thing right here, you can see this, this button down here is to turn on the power inverter there in the cargo area. Uh, this is to release the foot actuated parking brake. Then you have the headlight switch, you have automatic on parking lights and off. And then the fog lights are here and the cargo lights are here. The dimmer switch for the interior gauges is here. Ambient lighting inside the vehicle is here. That's to adjust those separately. To adjust the foot pedals down here, 
accelerator and brake pedal. You can move those in and out using that switch. And it has a tilt, not a telescoping steering column. So it just tilts up and down. And that's where the power uh, pedals come in handy because uh, let's say you need to go forward and back and get, get the seat in position that you want and the pedals aren't quite right, well you can adjust them here. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out, and I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. And for me, it is a little tiny bit too far back. Um, I'm six feet tall, I probably could drive in this position, uh, but if you're a little bit over six feet, you should have no problem. I mean, there's really generally a lot of room in this, in this truck, uh, front and back. So yeah, legroom, everything's good. And of course, you got the adjustable pedals as well. So the steering wheel it is a leather wrap steering wheel and it varies in thickness. So the bottom portion is a little bit thicker and then it gets a little bit thinner here at the top. It is heated as well. It has the uh, wood grain down here looking really nice. Nice brown color. A lot of vehicles don't match the steering wheel with the rest of the vehicle. They just like give you a regular old black steering wheel. This one is color matching which is really nice. Has some gold trim there. Uh, very impressive. Three dimensional rim popping out here. So it has the, just like a lot of Ram trucks and other vehicles, um, it has the buttons on the back of the steering wheel. So the volume buttons here, there's up, down. If you're not familiar with this, this is excellent. So once you get used to it, you're gonna get spoiled. It has up, down, and the center button. And there's both on this side and that side. And it's designed to line up with your fingers right here. So as you're driving, you can uh, control the volume for the radio here. And then the center button changed through the, through the audio sources. And here on the left side, there's an up, down, changes through the tracks or the radio stations, depending on what you're doing. And then a center button changes through the presets on the radio only. Here on the front, here on the right side, is the cruise control. So you turn it on, you can set with either one of those, resume and cancel, pretty straightforward there. Uh, but it also has the adaptive cruise control. When you turn that on, you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. It'll follow. Uh, behind the vehicle so if there's a vehicle in front of you that's slower it'll slow you down to match their speed and keep you at a set distance and that's the distance uh, adjustment there uh, there is the gear limit so if you need to down downshift for engine braking that kind of thing uh, you can control the uh, the gear limit here as well now it has a traditional uh, column shifter which is nice has a stitching right in here really nice looking and then here is the windshield wiper control The gauges are basically a screen. It's a little bit of a glare on my camera, but it doesn't, I don't see that glare with my eyes. So uh, hopefully it doesn't make it look bad because it actually looks really, really good. Uh, so let me try to, try to cover this up a little bit here. Camera doesn't wanna. Okay, so there we go. I mean, it looks really good. Uh, hopefully you can see it here, but uh, basically right now it's showing the, the RPMs, the tachometer here on the left. Uh, speedometer here on the right side. It shows the uh, diesel fuel, the DEF uh, gauge here on the left side, what gear you're in, engine coolant temperature, and then here in the center is the oil pressure. And then in the very center right here is the digital speedometer. Now this is controlled using these buttons here on the left side. So you have the, not only do you have the, um, the ability to answer calls, hang up, uh, you also have these buttons here, the arrows, okay, and then this button. This button cycles through different information like quick access type stuff. So you hit that button and you can scroll through the one that you want and you can uh, select the one you want. Let's say we don't have that. Well, it puts it right here, but it changes. Um, you see right there at number four. This is part of a menu system. So let's go back up to number one, which is the digital speedometer. We can go to the right and left on the digital speedometer and get different views. So we have that traditional kind of view, we scroll to the right, and then we have just a more simplified view right here. The RPM is now at the bottom and then the digital speedometer there. You still have your gauges and everything, it's just a little bit less um, filled out. We also see the uh, direction the vehicle's facing, the outside temperature uh, as well. So scrolling down though, we have number two, which is part of a menu system. And this is the driver information here. Um, so it's basically right now, it's just showing the, the status of the adaptive cruise control. Scroll down again, uh, vehicle info. So this is where we can get a lot of information. You see it says vehicle info, number three, and then it has a bunch of those little dots there showing that you can scroll to the right and left. 
shows the range, uh, all kinds of information here, gauge summary, oil summary, tire pressure, uh, diesel summary, fuel filter life, engine hours, and then it goes back to the original screen there. Scrolling down, it's number four, it's what we quick accessed before, uh, so that'd be fuel economy here, and the um, we can reset these independently. There's actually two of them, trip A and trip B, has the fuel economy uh, and the time and the distance. Scrolling down again gives us our uh, map display. So not only we can have it in the center screen or we can have it right here, or both, which is pretty cool. Scrolling down, number six, part of the menu system, we have our off-road information here. So right now it's the uh, angle of the steering angle and then the articulation or, or the uh, the drivetrain. So right now it's just rear wheel drive. If we go to the right, this is the pitch and roll. So this would be the like this and tilt this way, depending on you know. Right now we're on like completely level ground, so uh, it's not showing anything significant here. Scrolling down again, number seven, trailer tow information, uh, and then your trailer tow gain, the trailer brake gain control there, the trailer trip, and the trailer brake. Scrolling down again will be number eight, just whatever your radio is doing. Uh, number nine would be stored messages. Number ten will be your setup, so you can go in here and set up your screen. We'll hit OK. Uh, upper right, up center, upper left. We can adjust all those. You can have different uh, display styles, traditional. We can have modern. Let's go to modern here. And then let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Let's go back to the um, let's go back to the original screen here. So now we can switch to the right and then it gives us a modern look right here instead of that traditional style. All right, so let's go back where we were, number 10. So now number let, number the next one is basically number one, so speedometer. Uh, so it just calls back to the original. So if we scroll up, we can go directly to the 10 uh, and then we can do the screen setup and we can adjust the, change the different things there on the screen. So upper right, if we wanna have, right now it's showing the outside temperature, we can have time, range to empty, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, trip A distance, trip B distance, trailer trip, or none. Uh, outside temperature is useful. Okay. All right, so let's go back here to the default screen. For me, it would be number one. So yeah, that's kind of a quick rundown of that screen. There's a lot of information. You can set it up the way you want. You don't have to go through all that stuff, but it, all that information is there if you need it. And so it's right there in front of you. All right, so right here is a little storage compartment here, 12 volt power supply that connects directly to the battery. So you don't have to turn the engine on and it's already got power. Uh, there's the start button there. We have the four wheel drive controls here. And then we have the uh, center screen but it also has a lot of physical buttons around the outside as well make it a little bit easier to use i guess so it has a traction control off button default is on uh lane departure warning system is off you can turn that on if you want this is the off lights when the light's illuminated that means it's off um, and then the four-way flashers are here uh climate control driver and passenger temperatures are here where you want the air to blow Fan speed, you can turn on automatic if you want. Recirculate the air, front and rear defrosters, air conditioning controls there. You have a traditional volume, tune through the stations. You can quickly mute the radio here. You can turn it off here. Uh, you can also turn the screen off here if you want by pressing that button. Just tap the screen and turn it back on. And then, um, so now on the screen, there's quite a bit of information. I'm gonna quickly kind of give you some basics here. If you scroll from the top, it has shortcuts. You can set up your short, shortcuts here. Um, let's go ahead and move that. And so when you put it, I'm going to go through right now the, the camera because there's a lot of information here, very useful information. So you have the surround camera, top and front, top and rear, blind spot, passenger blind spot, cross path, rear cross path, rear view, and then cargo. So surround camera uh, gives us the the view all the way around the truck. So we can see all the way around. We can see that we can look at the back. See, this is a split view all the way around and then the back. Just the back, just the front. More linear on the front uh, with the top down view. 
directly behind the truck. And then there's the camera, uh, there's the cargo camera there. Now we can add an additional camera uh, for a trailer. So we can, once that's added, we can heat, uh, push that and then we'll see what the different cameras here, auxiliary one and auxiliary two cameras. Uh, you can actually add more if you want. So you know, if you want a camera behind your trailer, you can add that uh, in the system here. On the home screen here, we have a split view and we can have different, different views. Uh, we can add, even add more widgets here on the home screen, it's similar to your, like a cell phone, I guess. Uh, but right now it's just showing the, the navigation map and then whatever the radio is doing here. So we can edit the pages and choose what we want. The next one will be media. So whatever's playing, we can uh, view right here. So satellite radio information. Uh, it has album art and you know all that stuff as well. We can also do direct tune using this button right here. I have presets there at the bottom, favorites. Uh, we can also go into the audio settings here as well. We have the audio sources here. So FM, satellite radio, uh, whatever, like if you had a Bluetooth device, we can set that up if you want. All right, so the next one will be comfort. So this will be a little bit redundant because we have some buttons, physical buttons on the outside, this quick access, but we also have more information here. Heated and ventilated seats, three stage each, and then on off heated steering wheel controls are here as well. And then you have the, um, you know, where you want there to blow, the fan speed, uh, and then the, uh, the fan speed here, temperature, sorry. You can sync these if you want. They recirculate the air. So a little bit of redundancy on the screen uh, with the physical buttons, but it's really handy when you're actually using it. The next one will be the navigation map here. And it has the full view. And I like the way it, when it's, when this has this vertical view, you can kind of see down the road further. So it's kind of handy sometimes. Uh, so, and you can also have different views. So you hit this button, top down view, same thing. You have more of the map in front of you when you have this vertical screen. Let's go back to the other view. So there's north, there's 3D. And then of course you can you know search for different addresses and set it all up and everything. Next will be whatever your phone, uh, whatever phone you have paired information here, you can pair multiple devices and set them up on a priority system. Uh, the next one is the vehicle, and this is where we saw the camera systems. Uh, so you have the camera menu, dashboard menu, uh, controls, settings. So let's go to the dashboard. It has the trailer, the towing and trailers. It also has the off-road pages. So this will be the information, similar to what we saw on the other screen there. Steering angle, accessory gauges, pitch and roll. And then let's go to the settings. So lots and lots of information here, and they're sorted by category. And then you scroll through and make the adjustments that you want in the different uh, settings here. Lots of settings. You wanna go and set it all up the way you want. Uh, and if you, you know, wanna reset it, you can. Last but not least is your apps. Uh, so this will be similar to your cell phone where you have these little icons here. It does have Android Auto as well. Media, comfort, navigation, phone, different categories. All right, so below there is the trailer brake gain control and you have physical buttons here uh, this is the exhaust brakes uh, similar to like you know people call them jake brakes and stuff like that where uh, in addition to engine braking here you have this which you use the back pressure from the exhaust system to slow the vehicle down uh, so if you're going down a steep grade this is really handy uh, for diesels you do have a tow and haul mode tow and haul mode uh, and then there's front parking sensors off, rear off. So you could, this is the off button, once again, off, default is on. Then you have all your auxiliary switches uh, for you know additional lights and stuff. All right, there is the USB and auxiliary inputs there. Little storage compartment here. You have places wireless charger there for your cell phone. It kind of wedges right in here and it keeps it in place. Then you have an additional spot there. There's also, a, you can able, able to put wires out the bottom and wrap it around. It has a little bit of cable management so you can reach these ports if you want. There's also a power inverter here. So this is the not the cargo one. This is the one here in the front that is not controlled by the switch over here. So remember that switch, that controls the one in the back. This is separate from that. Uh, and then you have that there. Now, there's a little little bit of room. Let's see if I can move, pull this paper to show you. There's a little bit of space up in there. Um, so there's additional space up there. And then there is wide open space here, lots of space. 
and it goes all the way back and I'll show you that in a second because just this completely open under this thing uh, so this right here slides forward and back it's very solid once it locks in place you're not gonna it's not gonna be rattling or sliding around on you and even if it's not locked in place it's pretty solid it's pretty stiff so it doesn't like slap back and forth it has different positions here lock 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 I like the way this this wood this open pour wood has um, like a, a, a it looks like it's cut on an old sawmill with a with a tooth that is a little bit misaligned is what it looks like it's really really cool looking uh, so this opens up here uh, you can see the filigree and the gold as well and then you have the cup holders and there's a felt line storage compartment here and place to put coins as well all right and there's still space under there we'll see that in a minute uh, so there's the longhorn badging here looking nice nice big armrest you can share with your pastor if you want this is so big have more of that wood grain there and then this button right here there's actually two uh, levers the top one lifts up this part and it's a felt line it's kind of smaller compartment here there is a USB port here in the back um, it doesn't have any cover though so you know, it could get some lint or whatever. So I highly recommend getting a little a little cover for that, this little plug-in cover to keep that clean, keep stuff from falling in there. Because when you lift this up, it's just gonna like dump lint and just any dirt that happens to be in this compartment right into that USB port. All right, then the second part lifts up and they have a lot of cool information under here, which is cool. Uh, cool information is cool, that's cool. <laughs> All right, so this compartment, once again, as I mentioned, it's completely wide open under this. So lots of space in general. And this has this little divider that lifts up so you can keep stuff from sliding forward. Or you can keep it wide open like this. And yeah, really handy uh, space. And once again, when we slide this, lock, lock there. So now we can access the front. Or the back, however we want to do it. Soft here, the compartment right here as well for putting papers. This is handy for like you get your mail and you got a wad of junk mail and you just want to set it down, you know, uh, for, for right there. That's a really good place for papers right there. Okay, so the rear view mirror is the auto dim rear view mirror. Also, uh, auto dim side mirrors as well. The upper portion of the side mirror, anyway, is auto dim place to put your sunglasses or safety glasses here and it's a felt lining there's individual reading lights here here you can turn on all the interior lights with that button you can have them turn on with the door as well or you can turn that feature off with the, another off button uh, we can lower the tailgate from here that's pretty neat uh, this is for the uh, sunroof sunroof and then this is to slide the rear glass uh, in the back window uh, so this is the vent and this is the slide the center we'll get to that in a minute the visor is a cloth material just like the headliner matching and everything it has a clip right here it has a mirror with lights interesting uh, there's also home link garage door putter control here another clip also slides out so you can slide it over if you need to same thing on the other side Okay, so the sunroof uh, has a shade that blocks 100% of the light, and you can manually move it back. So let's go ahead and vent it, close it, slide it, and no, we're not going to bop it. All right, press it again. All right, that's as far back as it goes there. looking at the visibility you can see that since it's that this mega cab it has that large pillar there in the back so that kind of impedes your view a little bit also these headrests get in the way a little bit um, so of course you can fold the seats down that helps out but just as it is it's a little bit limited on visibility uh, and let's go ahead and open that rear glass so you can see what that looks like uh, but it does have a really great camera system parking sensors uh, rear cross traffic alert blind spot detection system all the different features to help you drive the truck safely but you know as it is it's a little bit limited on the on the visibility just looking out the rear glass now it has really good side mirrors and all that stuff um but you know just want to point that out anyways uh, i'll have this window sticker in the 
end of the video and also in the description so you can check it out. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina. I'll have a link to their dealership here in the description. Great dealership. Highly recommend them. So th once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.